next piece of our patient assessment system looks a little different depending if you are working with a medical patient or a trauma patient. Our secondary assessment is very similar with both of these patient populations, but in our trauma patient, which we're gonna talk about now, we call it a detailed physical exam. The detailed physical exam is looking for things that are out of the norm, that don't belong. We do have an acronym for our detailed physical exam and the things that we are looking for, and it's DCAP BTLS. The D stands for deformities. What is shaped weird? What is out of place? Are there lumps where there shouldn't be lumps or bones creating different angles where there shouldn't be angles? The C of DCAP BTLS stands for contusions, which is a fancy word for bruises. These sometimes we actually have to see with our eyes and the detailed physical exam should be getting down to skin level at some point. Medicine happens at the skin level. So some of these things can't be ascertained through clothing. Abrasions is the A of DCAP BTLS, and this is our road rash or raspberries. Punctures and penetrations that can be caused by a variety of things. Penetrating wounds, we often think of stab wounds or gunshot wounds. Punctures can be created by these sorts of projectiles or potentially by sharp objects that are in the car or tree limbs. If the object that created the puncture is still in place, we call it an impaled object. Look for burns. A patient may know of a burn in one area because it's painful, but they may not know the extent of those burns or that they're burned in other areas. Tenderness. The difference between pain and tenderness is the patient tells us about things that are painful. It hurts here. Tenderness may not be discovered until we actually palpate the area. And our intent with our detailed physical exam is to inspect the skin, is to palpate the patient, and to actually look for injuries that they may not be aware of. So tenderness is elicited by palpation. Lacerations is a fancy word for cuts. And swelling where there is fluid that is filling tissues, it may cause tenderness and it may cause pain in addition, but we actually have deformation of the tissue with that swelling. A detailed physical exam can be conducted in a variety of ways. Generally speaking, we do a detailed physical exam from head to toe. It doesn't necessarily matter how you do a detailed physical exam, as long as you do it the same way every time, that limits the possibility of forgetting entire body parts. So when you practice your physical exams, do it the same way every time because you're training yourself in a skill. So head to toe, let's start with the head for most of our patients. And with the head, we are going to palpate the scalp, the skull underneath that scalp, looking at the eyes, making sure that they look the same, that we don't find any of that DCAP BTLS, checking the nose, ears, for any fluids that might be there, behind the ears for potentially bruising, check in the mouth for anything loose that shouldn't be in there. Uh, if they've lost some teeth or that sort of thing, we can have them spit it out. And checking their facial structure itself. One way to do this is you can have the patient grit their teeth, and sort of activates the muscles in the face. This picture is indicating some cerebral spinal fluid in blood. If you have somebody who has a blow to the head and has fluid coming out of their nose and ears, it's considered bad until proven otherwise. One thing we may attempt to evaluate for is cerebral spinal fluid mixed with blood, and we do that with a white piece of material, which we put a drop of that fluid on and see if it creates this halo effect where that cerebral spinal fluid sort of rings the blood. It's a very challenging assessment tool for the field. We can check the neck. The front of the neck is not given to palpation. It's pretty uncomfortable for our patients. So we will inspect the front of the neck and we'll look for things like tracheal deviation, 
seen here, the trachea or the windpipe should be sitting midline down the front of the neck. If it's riding shotgun or it's off to the side, it could be indicative of some bigger things going on. We're also looking for jugular vein distension. If we lay our patients back at about a 45 degree angle and their neck veins pop out, it could be indicative of something going on in their chest. We can also look for medical alert tags. We can look for stomas or maybe the history of a stoma or a tracheostomy where they had a breathing tube placed in the front of their neck. And then we will palpate the back of the neck down along the cervical vertebra, sort of playing piano down each of those bony protrusions from the cervical spine. Continuing our head to toe, we're going to run our fingers out either collarbone, checking for tenderness or step-offs or crepitus, that crunchy crunch feeling underneath our fingers, all those decap BTLS. We can also palpate the integrity of the sternum. We often place the side of our hand along the sternum and just apply some gentle pressure to check the integrity of it. We're going to inspect the chest. We're gonna look at the skin level, looking for any of those deformities, contusions, abrasions, swelling, anything else that is out of the norm. Palpating the rib cage is often done by placing one hand on either side of the rib cage, first starting up in the armpits, providing some gentle pressure and asking the patient to take a big deep breath. Again, checking the integrity of the rib cage to make sure that there's no problems. If your hands are small or the patient has a big rib cage, we often repeat that lower down on the rib cage, which you'll see in the following video. We can then auscultate lung sounds. The abdomen, we wanna think about four quadrants. If we can find the belly button or have the patient point to their belly button to their navel, we draw a vertical line and a transverse line from the belly button, dividing the abdomen into four different quadrants. We then use a big broad hand with gentle pressure and a rolling motion from the base of the palm to the fingers to provide some gentle palpation and pressure to each of those four quadrants of the abdomen, checking for things like tenderness, distension, hard spots where they should be soft. Notice that abdominal organs do extend up underneath the bottom of the costal arch, otherwise known as the rib cage. So making sure that that palpation goes underneath the edges of the rib cage and sort of down underneath the edges of the hip bones as well. The next piece of anatomy that we come to is the pelvis. We need to assess for pelvic stability. Now the pelvis is shaped like a pretzel. So it rarely breaks in only one place. When we assess for pelvic stability, we want to do it once and do it well, and then leave it alone. We'll place a hand on either side of the pelvis and press in. We don't always assess the genitals. We need to assess, does that mechanism of injury warrant checking the genitals? If it does, then we need to look. We don't palpate but we need to examine to inspect the genitals. If possible, having a provider of the same sex provides more comfort to the patient. If the mechanism of injury does not indicate that there could be genital injury, then we won't inspect the genitals. For the lower extremities, we will palpate the thighs using big hands and making sure that we palpate every inch of our patient checking for all those things again, stability, tenderness, lacerations, contusions, uh, maybe open wounds and bleeding as well. We'll start at the top of the thigh and go all the way down to the ankles. Once we get to the feet, we are gonna check CSM. Some organizations call this PMS, pulse motor sensation. Our organization calls this circulation motion and sensation, CMS. For circulation, we will check for pulses. The places that we check and the way that we check pulses is in another video. So we'll check to make sure that they have bilateral pulses. So the pulse is the same in both feet at the same time. Another way we can check for circulation is by utilizing capillary refill. 
Normal capillary refill is less than two seconds. We press on the nail beds, it blanches out and it pinks up in short order. Delayed capillary refill using the same technique, we press on those nail beds and it's more than two to three seconds to pink up, then we have delayed capillary refill. Now, most of the time, this is not a very effective tool, especially in our cold environments. Capillary refill checks works very well when we are splinting extremities, which we'll talk about in a different video, to check bilateral circulation. If one arm is splinted, it should still have the same capillary refill time as the arm that isn't splinted, regardless if that's delayed or not. Now, in our pediatric populations, especially in young children, in normal thermic environments, so a warm house, for example, capillary refill time can be very helpful to assess perfusion of our pediatric patients. And if it's delayed, it's a good indicator that maybe some other processes like shock are occurring. We'll talk about that more during a pediatric lecture. Motion or movement, we're checking the nerves that go from the brain to the body. So when the brain tells those hands or feet to move, is that actually occurring? We often have the patient pull their toes up towards their nose with a little bit of counter pressure and then push down on the gas pedals with a little bit of counter pressure. Sensation is simply, can they feel us touching them? It's checking different sets of nerves from the body up to the brain. Can the body tell the brain what's going on? And we check to see if the patient can feel us touching them in a specific place. Now we've headed down the trunk of the body, let's head back up to those shoulders. We're gonna check the arms like we check the legs by palpating all of the real estate and making sure that there's no pain or tenderness or deformations or any of those DCAP BTLS. And then once we get down to the hands, we again are gonna check that CMS. Circulation, check the pulse, make sure it's equal bilateral, if capillary refill is appropriate, we can use that. We're gonna check the motion, have them squeeze our hands. Often offering two fingers is a safe way for us to check their ability to squeeze. And we wanna do that bilaterally. We wanna see if the strength is the same from one side of the body to the other. And then we'll check sensation. Can they feel where we're touching them without looking? The back is often the last thing we check. However, if your patient is already lying face down or prone, or they're sitting up, we may check the back first in our head to toe before we lay them down on our gurney because it's already accessible. So something to think about. But often it is the last thing that we check. When we check the back, we're going to check the spine as well as the general real estate. So as we check the spine, we're going to walk our fingers down each of the bony prominences to check for tenderness on the spine itself. We can then palpate the shoulder blades and the sides of the spine, the flanks, the kidney areas, to check for any tenderness or injury that may have occurred there. And that concludes our detailed physical exam for our trauma patients. We're going to show you an example of a detailed physical exam. Let me know if anything hurts, please. Does your jaw feel normal? Does your nose feel normal? Okay, can you open your mouth? Are your teeth feel good? Okay, don't move your head, please. GVDs are not noted. Tracheal deviation is not noted. There is no stoma. 
and there is no medical alert tag. No obvious traumas. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and listen to your lung sounds. Go ahead and take a deep breath, please. Again. One more. One more. Thank you. from your abdomen. Pelvis, in pain. Okay. If necessary, I would check the genitalia. Down. Just feeling okay? Mm -hmm. Checking for a pulse. Have a strong fetal pulse. What toe am I touching? Big toe. Can you wiggle your toes? Thank you. Coming down. Okay. What toe am I touching? Big toe. Can you wiggle your toes? Now I'm going to make sure that the pulses are equal, that there's not one different in one side versus the other. They're equal. Any pain or tenderness in this arm? Okay. Good strong pulse. Not this arm. Okay, can you put your hands on your chest, please? What finger am I touching? Pinky. What finger am I touching? Thumb. Can you grip my fingers? Equal. And the pulses are I'm going to go ahead and roll the patient over directly towards me on the count of three. One, two, three. The back inspected. Making sure that there's no signs of trauma. Now I'm going to palpate the spine. Please let me know if anything hurts. Anything hurt down here? Okay. I don't see any blood, no deformity, no pain. Okay. I'm going to roll back over. 